Well, tis the season of severe weather, and on this Sunday, I want to give you a quick update on what's going on, at least a look at the future radar as we head through Sunday, because some strong to severe thunderstorms possible across parts of Ohio, Pennsylvania, even as far east as New York, New Jersey. The good thing is, as we head into the overnight hours, things will start to settle down as we see some more stability in the atmosphere, but heading into tomorrow... That boundary still moving to the south in the morning hours, maybe not doing so much. It'll be an invisible threat, I guess, so to speak. But look what happens as you move into the afternoon and evening hours. A lot of instability here, a lot of warm air in place. And as that boundary moves south, a few storms could fire here. The Storm Prediction Center highlighting this area for a few severe thunderstorms possible also on Monday. But the big threat also is going to be just to the west. We're talking about across the Plain States. An enhanced area. This is a three on a scale of five from central Pennsylvania back into southern parts of Ohio, or I should say southeast parts of Ohio surrounded by a slight risk and that's nothing to sneeze at either the thing is everything lining up a little bit linear here and i want to point that out because when that happens while you will see a few cells go out on their own and be what we call discrete when they get by themselves or go out and be more supercellular you see a risk of running more tornadoes uh, with that type of scenario but with things lining up like this that may be a good thing as far as tornadoes but the problem is then you can get into damaging winds not only are we looking at the tornado threat which i think there could be a few isolated ones the uh, severe threat as far as damaging winds and hail certainly on the table in any of these areas. Tornado risk, again, not a non-zero. In fact, the highest areas would be on the uh, central and western parts of PA over into eastern Ohio. That does include places like Pittsburgh. The timing of this, again, will be mainly in the evening hours, late afternoon, evening, and then to the early overnight hours. And then heading into tomorrow, that threat pushes off to the south and then a broad threat off to the west back across the central plain states. Now an enhanced area here from central Oklahoma down into parts of north Texas, including the Panhandle, and a widespread area of slight risk. The problem on Monday will be damaging hail. You can see the significant severe area hashed out here, especially in those same areas where I showed you the highest risk. And yes, tornadoes certainly on the table tomorrow with a lot of wind shear. And that's to be set across the northeast too with this system that's moving through. And heading into Tuesday, the severe threat pushes off to the east now, an enhanced area here from northern parts of uh, Missouri into parts of Iowa. And look, this widespread risk of severe weather with this storm will continue as it pushes off to the east. A lot of warm air out ahead of this too. These are your departures from average. So look at these temperatures here across the central plains, 15 to 20 degrees above average. A little cooler than normal across the northeast. Once that front pushes south, that boundary, so to speak, that's why we're going to see the cooler temperatures here. And then as we head into Tuesday and Wednesday, still pretty much everybody above normal. Some colder air. I'm going to call it cold. Trying to work into parts of the northern U.S. as we head into Thursday. I talked about this yesterday. Arctic outbreak. I mean, what does that look like in April? Well, it doesn't look like what it looks like in January, but I think it does mean below normal temperatures as we head into the weekend. Today's model is a little bit slower with that cold air. Pushing it now into north Texas as we move into Friday. Not quite to the east coast we're still talking about places like ohio back through indiana illinois pushing across arkansas by the time we get to friday and then into saturday and these are temperatures departures so look across texas oklahoma kansas we can see departures 20 to 30 degrees below average and as that moves to the east I guess if there is a glimmer of hope, it does start to modify some, but anywhere over purple, we'll, we're still talking 15 to 20 degrees below average for our temperatures late next weekend into early next week. And a quick look at the surface map, if you're tracking precipitation, all that severe weather is going to be associated with the strong area of low pressure that's moving out in the plain states. So out ahead of it, we'll see those rounds of severe weather as the low moves off to the north and east. Generally, I would say here in this core area around the low where the front sets up, the cold front that is, as we get that push of colder, drier air behind it, relatively colder air, I guess. That's where you'll see your severe thunderstorms. And as we move into Wednesday, that pushes, I think you got to watch places like the Ohio Valley. Now, the long range outlook from the Storm Prediction Center highlighting right here along the Ohio River into west central Kentucky, also northern parts of Tennessee, Indiana, Ohio. And they're not confident enough on Thursday. I don't know that I am either because the storm does start to weaken some as it moves toward the Great Lakes. And then we'll be dealing with rain showers across the east and a few showers here heading into Thursday. So heading into the weekend, we'll watch some energy move across this frontal boundary. There could be some showers here uh, in many areas across the south. And I'll tell you, today's model is not nearly as strong with the cold air, but we're still looking at below normal temperatures in many of these areas. What will be, I think, interesting to watch as this high pressure moves in, this is cold Arctic high, what happens in those early morning hours underneath that when we get calm winds? Do we see frost in areas where maybe we might not see it this time of year? Certainly not uncommon. And the models are definitely picking up on those colder temperatures in the 20s and 30s here across the interior areas of the Northeast, even back toward the Ohio Valley and the Appalachians. And look, we're in the 40s across the South, so pretty chilly here too. Even some 30s showing up. All right, guys, I'll catch you next time.